The polls have just closed in New York. We'll hear from the candidates and what's at stake in the Big Apple. LAPD is moving forward with its plan to equip officers with body cameras, but some want more transparency from the police. City officials voted to increase paid sick days for workers. We'll tell you how this could affect small businesses and LA workers. Annenberg TV News is next. Live from USC, you're watching Annenberg TV News. The New York primary could be a turning point in the race for the White House. Good evening, I'm Taylor Edgell. And I'm Ivana Wynn. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are predicted to win the state of New York. The Republican presidential candidates were in New York and Pennsylvania as New York voters went to the polls. GOP frontrunner Donald Trump is in New York tonight watching the results come in. It's a great honor, really. Who would have thought this was just a great honor? And I think it's a great honor for New York. New York is a special place. So we're going to make America great again. Thank you very much. Trump cast his vote at the Central Synagogue in Manhattan. When he was asked who he voted for, Trump responded, easy decision. Former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani has officially endorsed Trump in an interview, but he insisted that he's not doing anything else. I'm Rudy Giuliani. I mean a lot in New York politics. I endorse Donald Trump, but I'm, but I'm not part of the campaign. Well, I don't understand. What does that last part mean? What does mean? that mean is I'm not a surrogate. They haven't asked me to do anything. I'm not involved in the campaign. I can interpret it as an endorsement, but I'm just not part of the campaign. In Pennsylvania, Governor Kasich says he's looking forward to the GOP convention in July. It's all about accumulating delegates going into the convention because now everybody has figured out that um, we're actually going to go to a, a competitive convention, an open convention. Well, look, we have rules. You know, if you don't can't hit the magic number, then, you know, you didn't get enough. So you fall short. And then we go into a process of, of multiple ballots. Senator Ted Cruz is also in Pennsylvania trying to get a jump start in next week's primary. Pennsylvania is one of five states holding elections next week. The others include New Jersey, Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland, and Rhode Island. On the Democratic side, presidential candidate Hillary Clinton is in New York watching the results come in, while rival Bernie Sanders is already in Pennsylvania campaigning ahead of next week's primary. I love New York, and this has been a joy um, during the last uh, two weeks to be here all over the state. Sanders says Clinton's win is far from set in stone. However, he regrets the fact that independent voters could not cast their ballots in today's election. I'm afraid she's going to be disappointed. We're feeling very good. And if there is a large voter turnout, despite the impediment of three million people not being able to participate, I think we're going to do just fine. Annenberg Media's Ali Main joins us in the studio with a look at how today's results will affect the delegate count in each party. Ali? Thanks, Taylor. With the primary close, polls closing in New York at the top of the hour, the candidates will soon know how much closer they are to earning their respective party's nomination. On the Republican side, Trump has 756 pledged delegates, and he needs 481 to get the party's domination. Cruz has 559 delegates and needs 678 to get the nomination, and Kasich has 144 delegates and needs 1,093 to get the nomination. 95 delegates are at stake today for the Republican field. For the Democrats, Clinton has 1,289 pledged delegates and 469 superdelegates. Superdelegates are unpledged delegates that have expressed their support for Clinton, but are not obligated to vote for her at the first round of voting at the Democratic National Convention in July. Clinton needs 625 delegates to get the party's nomination. Sanders has 1,045 pledged delegates and 31 superdelegates. He needs 1,307 delegates to earn the nomination. 247 delegates are up for grabs today for the Democratic field. We spoke to a political expert about why today's primaries matter so much to the candidates. Well, at least in New York, it's hard to see a situation in which both Trump and Clinton don't win the state by a sizable margin. But winning New York isn't enough for either of them, no matter how big a margin they win by. The reason it's so important this year is, of course, neither uh, party has yet decided on, on their nominee. And even though Secretary Clinton and Donald Trump look like heavy favorites tonight, it doesn't look like either one of them will probably win by enough of a margin 
to put away their competition going forward. Multiple news organizations are reporting that Donald Trump is the winner in New York. Responses about the primary have been pouring in all day on Twitter. Almost half a million posts have been posted in the last 24 hours relating to the hashtag New York primary as well as other related hashtags. The volume for these primaries has only been increasing as we've gotten closer to the polls closing throughout the day. And the, the tweets are coming mostly from the United States, but some have also been coming in from abroad. I have a scrolling um, list of some tweets coming in, so let's take a look. Let's open. This is one from not too long ago, um, right before the polls closed, five minutes actually before the polls closed, saying, hey, New York, if you're in line to vote, stay in line. The polls will close shortly. Will the New York primary go down in history? Let's take a look at another tweet from The Patriot. I'm so proud to be voting today. Hashtag New Yorker values. Hashtag New York primary. Trump 2016. Trump train and ma make America great again. Stay tuned for New York primary results later in the show. Yes, we're definitely looking forward to that. Thanks, Allie. Plans to outfit every LAPD officer with a body camera by the end of next year are on hold because of the hefty price tag. Still, Mayor Eric Garcetti is pushing to make it happen. But Annenberg Media's Madison Keevy reports some are concerned about who will have access to the videos. Before phones and cameras, videos like this were rare. This video was recorded by a police officer wearing a body camera in Florida. This technology that Mayor Eric Garcetti and the Los Angeles Police Department are pushing to provide to every LAPD officer. LA is not divided on this issue. I, I think our communities, my administration, our civil rights leadership and the police department are doing their part to build consensus around this issue. Make no mistake about this. This is the future of law enforcement. This is the future of policing. Ten years from now, the question will not be, should we get body cameras? It'll be, why don't you have body cameras? Body cameras are worn directly on officers, and once turned on, will record from their perspective. For today, this GoPro will act as my body cam. If I were an officer, I would attach it, turn it on, and even something like a routine traffic stop could be recorded. But some experts say it's not the body cams that are the issue, but the transparency with the footage. There's got to be accountability and transparency in how police deal with minority communities. Earl Afari Hutchinson said the LA Urban Policy Roundtable and the ACLU have submitted proposals to the LAPD with suggestions for transparency, but changes have not been made. Either you're going to have the video cams, as you've announced, and there's going to be some aspect or some dimension of public disclosure, however that's set up. And if you're not going to have it, don't have the body cam. Plans to outfit every LAPD officer are on hold because of a lack of funding for the $57 million project. The city council is working to review all possible bids for the body cameras. For Annenberg Media, I'm Madison Keevy. Los Angeles City Controller Ron Galperin announced today the results of an LAPD audit. The report recommended hiring civilians to do more than 400 LAPD jobs so officers are free to do more police work. Well, what we did is uh, issue an audit in the controller's office looking at opportunities for civilianizing positions that are currently uh, done at LAPD, at the uh, police department, by our sworn officers, but instead can be done by those who are not sworn. We can save our city a lot of money. We can also put more of our officers out on the street to do what they do best. The potential police jobs to be turned over to civilians include managing social media accounts, maintaining equipment rooms, and tracking documents. The report found the city could save more than $50 million each year with the replacements. The Los Angeles City Council tentatively approved a proposal today that requires employers to provide at least six days of paid six leave, sick leave each year. The council voted 13 to 1 in favor of raising it from the current minimum of three days. This would also benefit employees who need to take care of sick family members. It means a lot, especially me and my family, because I'm the only one in my family that is working, um, that, yeah, that's working out of Walmart. And also to it means a lot to my fellow co-workers too, those who are trying to uh, work for their families and their loved ones too businesses are against increasing paid sick leave. The manager of a Taco Don Chente in Bell Gardens told KPCC, quote, we're going to have the cost of the person who's out, plus pay the overtime of the person who's covering for the person who's out. It becomes expensive to have people out when they're sick. A legal expert weighed in on the issue.
The downside for employers is that they're going to have to cover that work in some other fashion. So if I take an additional four, five, six days because I'm sick, that work that I would ordinarily do while I'm on duty will have to be covered in some fashion by someone else. So the law needs to be drafted by the city attorney and approved next month in order for it to go into effect by July 1st. That's also the date when the first phase of the minimum wage hike to $15 takes effect. At least 28 people have been killed and more than 300 injured after a suicide bomb attack in the Afghanistan capital of Kabul. The blast happened after a suicide bomber claiming to be Taliban detonated a car filled with explosives in the parking lot of the Afghan intelligence agency. A second attacker then entered the building and died in a gun battle with security forces. The Interior Ministry spokesman said that despite the target, most of the victims were civilians, including women and children. Today's attack comes after a recent report from the United Nations showing that civilian casualties reached record highs last year in Afghanistan. Ecuador's government now says more than 440 people have died after Saturday's earthquake. The death toll is expected to climb. The 7.8 magnitude earthquake hit coastal tourist areas like Puerto Viejo the hardest. Ecuador deployed thousands of soldiers and police officers to set up temporary hospitals and shelters. But getting enough supplies and rescue crews to affected areas is still a challenge. We would love to be there to help. But since we are far, I think that we can do, what we can do is raise funds to try to help these people. Domenica started a GoFundMe page to raise funds for her family's organization, which will use donations to provide food, clean water, provisional tents, and medical care. She started the page this morning and has made $600 so far. She hopes to raise at least $20,000 for quake victims. The USC administration reports progress in efforts to improve diversity on campus. Reactions are coming up. The French ambassador to the United States was on campus this afternoon. We'll learn more about his visit. And AAA announced the 2016 Green Car of the Year Awards to see if your favorite car is among the winners. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work. Show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60. Two over 50. One over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. The French ambassador to the United States, Mr. Gérard Arro, was at USC today as part of an event organized by the USC Francophone Research and Resource Center. The ambassador spoke to a crowded room of students, faculty, and the public about French foreign policy in a world where terror attacks are becoming more frequent. Annenberg Media's Ryan Thompson sat down with the ambassador for an exclusive interview after his speech. And Ryan, I understand that you spoke to the ambassador about the recent terror attacks in France. Yes, thanks, Ivana. Thanks, Taylor. After Charlie Hebdo and the November Paris attacks, France has quickly been drawn to the front lines of the fight against terrorism. The country has been under a state of emergency since November. I spoke with Mr. Arrault about how the threat of ISIS in France differs from the threat to America.
like the US, uh, we are facing ISIS, which is an existential threat. Uh, there are nearly 2,000 young French who are actually, they have left France and they are in Syria. They have joined ISIS and, and they will come back. They will come back radicalized, militarized, and there will be, of course, a, a major threat to our security. Following the attacks, the far-right political parties in France saw a big boost in support. Many have compared the politics of the Front National leader Marine Le Pen to Donald Trump. I asked Mr. Arrault what he thought about the rise of the French Front National and how it's different from the rise of Mr. Trump's campaign. Everywhere uh, in the Western democracies, uh, we are facing the rise of populism. And uh, you see it in your own electoral campaign, but you see it in France, but you see it in the UK. The real question is why, you know, really? And why some of our citizens feel disfranchised, feel not represented by the political system, feel victims of the economics, and they decide uh, out of despair uh, to go to the far right. I think that's a, a, a debate that we should have together. Because, again, uh, uh, Trumpism is a transatlantic phenomenon. And there is much more from our interview with the ambassador. You can catch it in its entirety online at uscannenbergmedia.com. Thanks, Ryan. USG released a memo today highlighting the changes made to help USC become more accepting of the diversity among students and faculty on campus. USC sees a lot of students from different backgrounds and has set up programs to help many groups on campus. They include the Yellow Ribbon Program to support veterans enrolled at USC, as well as the First Generation Student College Summit Path to Success. The Annenberg Foundation has donated $5 million to increase access to a journalism education for students from diverse ethnic and socioeconomic backgrounds. USG has also decided to appoint diversity liaisons for each academic department to handle a conflict related to diversity. All these things are incredible strides that we're making and this is what I think students have been speaking up about for years and this is so, it, it's, in, it's incredible to see this happening. Um, I know there are, there are more things that we could be doing but it, as it is with any advocacy work we have to celebrate our accomplishments and this was definitely a huge one. USG will continue to make changes in hopes of making the diversity climate better here at USC. Earth Day is coming up and a group of USC students is making an effort to go green. Students write sustainability practices in offices across campus today in an effort to raise awareness about environmental issues. Faculty and students in a sustainability science class led the Green Room Certification Sustainability Audit. They organized into teams to survey offices across campus. Offices were ranked in nine categories, including waste, water, energy, and transportation. It's basically an evaluation of the sustainable character of a building and its infrastructure. It derives from this really revolutionary concept of combining all these different fields and also getting direct feedback from what we call the people of the place, the local community members, to create uh, designs and ideas that are really sustainable based on location. The audit results will allow USC to give specific recommendations to workers and offices to increase green practices in the workplace. And with the sun shining here in Southern California, we're counting down the days until summer. I know I am. Let's turn things over to our weather anchor, Hannah Vega. Thanks girls, it's such a great time to prep for beach days and get a tan. Right now, as you can see, we have fair skies. It's 80 degrees outside and humidity is 21%. If you want to look ahead to tomorrow's highs, we're going to head east towards the desert. You're going to see that Palm Springs is going to be 97 degrees, the Big Bear warm at 63 degrees, and Riverside 89 degrees. Heading over to the west side, you can see Thousand Oaks is going to be 80 degrees and Malibu is going to be 75 degrees. Heading to central LA, you can see over here around downtown 83 degrees, Glendale 87. For your forecast, we're going to move along and you'll see that things are going to get a little bit chilly. 69 degrees on Friday, mostly sunny, patchy fog even, so it should be a pretty nice week. I'm just really excited to get to go to the park and do some other outdoor activities. So what are some of your favorite activities? Yeah, like you said earlier, Hannah, I'm definitely ready to hit the beach. As am I. Well, thank you, Hannah. Thanks so much. The AAA Automotive Club of Southern California showcased today what it says are the top three environmental cars of 2016. Uh, 
Out of 81 surveyed vehicles, AAA says the top three environmentally friendly cars of the year are the Tesla 70D, BMW i3, and the Volkswagen e-Golf. It's a very comprehensive guide looking at everything green, um, vehicles that have great fuel economy, hybrids, plug-in hybrids, electrics. But um, what makes our guide unique is we look at all aspects of the vehicle. AAA also found the average fuel economy for passenger cars have increased to 25 miles per gallon. It's pretty good. Ivana, have you had a chance to go to a baseball game yet? Well, I haven't, but they, I've heard they've been struggling and are looking to get back on the win track. Let's turn it over to our sports anchor, Ty Hawkins. Baseball is in full swing tonight as they host the dirt bags of Long Beach State tonight at Dado Field. The women of Troy's track and field team was able to secure an elite sprinter from our friends in the north. And in NBA news, one of the smoothest guards in the game was recognized for his stellar play off the bench. ATVN Sports is next. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. The Trojans baseball team is back on the diamond tonight at Dado Field against the Long Beach State Dirtbags. After dropping five straight, head coach Dan Hubbs is trying to motivate his slumping team. It'll be mainly just really trying to refocus our energy on letting them know how good they are and I know they're not throwing great right now but this is what we need to do to get better and and then at the end of the day you got to be confident in everything you throw and let it loose and see what happens. Right now the score is tied at zero between the uh, dirtbags and the Trojans so not at a zero if you get a chance to go over to Dado check it out. The women of Troy track and field team signed one of Canada's top sprinters to a national letter of intent today in Kyra Constantine of St. Rock Catholic School in Brampton, Ontario. Last season, Constantine took home first place in the 200 and 400 meters at the 2015 Ontario Federation of School Athletic Associations, posting a personal best in the 200 of 23-9. Last week, Max Brown joined us in studio to talk about the spring football season and their opener against Alabama. Today, all everything wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster stopped by, sports scene in fact, to talk about the newly acquired athletic director Lynn Swan and of course, quarterback Max Brown. Max Brown and Sam Darnold are both great quarterbacks. You know, the good accuracy. Uh, Max can throw farther. Max, uh, Sa uh, Sam's ball is a lot faster. And Len Swan is an uh, unbelievable guy. You know, the stuff that he, he's done is that we all want to do. We, he's lived the dream, basically. You know, going to the Super Bowl, being drafted in the first round, you know, being MVP of a Super Bowl, going to three-time Pro Bowls, and it was just, it's just amazing. You can see the rest of Juju's interview with the Sports Scene Squad online at uscannenbergmedia.com. The number two ranked Women of Troy golf team continue their dominant play today at the Pac-12 Championships at the Ruby Hills Golf Course up north in Pleasanton. Junior, junior Gabriella, Gabriella then shot a career best 7 under 65 to give USC a 13 stroke lead after 36 holes. The 13 under effort from the team topped Monday's previous score of 10 under. Arizona and UCLA are behind USC, tied at 10 under. This afternoon, reserve extraordinaire Jamal Crawford of the Los Angeles Clippers took home the sixth man of the year award for, his, for a record third time. At his press conference today, he took the time to explain how he feels about receiving the award. 
I've never made an all-star game. You know, I've always had my peers and, and coaches respect around the league. Consistency is one of the one of the things for longevity. I think if you're consistent over your career, I've always tried to pride myself on that. Kids coming up maybe, you know, 19 years old, like, hey, I don't have to start. I can still have an uh, impact on the bench. So are you a big fan of Crawford? Big Crawford fan, proud Pacific Northwest representer. And as you see, talk about consistency, teamwork, things like that, and show that you can be a part of the team even if you're not a starter. Well, it's awesome that he won that then. Yeah, sounds like a great guy. Thanks, Ty. The results for the New York primary are coming in. Annenberg Media's Ali Main will give us a look at what candidates are ahead in the race. Coming up. Earthquakes you see in movies are one thing, but real life is a completely different animal. Just because you can't predict an earthquake doesn't mean that you can't prepare for one. In the event of a real earthquake, you should drop, cover, and hold on. Visit ready.gov earthquake and practice what to do to keep you and your family safe in the event of a real earthquake. And you'll be seen as a hero by your family and your loved ones. Visit ready.gov earthquake today. Hey, look, it's those guys. What's up? What's happening today? Let's go, those pearly whites, man. Yeah. Check it out. Ooh, cute. Are you good to try? I'm fine. Hey, hey, girl, hey, girl, what's up? What's the name? What's good? What's up? How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Sir, go and step out of the vehicle for me. Yes, sir. See ya, buddy. Today, Sean's got a hearing. We'll see how it goes. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing, and it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. Annenberg Media's Ali Main is in studio with us to report the results of the New York primary. Ali? New York primary polls closed less than 30 minutes ago, and the Associated Press is now reporting early results. Donald Trump has won the Republican primary in New York. Based off of 1% of precincts reporting, Trump received 69% of the vote, followed by Kasich with 18% of the vote. Cruz came in third place with 14% of the vote. With 1% of precincts reporting, Hillary Clinton is in the lead with 60% of the Democratic vote, and Bernie Sanders follows with 40% of the vote. After tonight's big primary, the candidates will now look ahead to next week when residents in five different states will cast their votes in primaries. Keep following USC Annenberg Media for more coverage of Vote 2016. Well, what do you guys think about that? Surprise? Next. <laughs> next? Not what are we really. Doing? Not really? Oh, jeez. Jeez, leave it at that. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> nice opinion, Ty. <laughs> Okay, well guys, thanks so much for watching Annenberg TV News. From everyone here at Annenberg Media, I'm Taylor Etchell. And I'm Ivana Wynn. You can watch us on the web at uscannenbergmedia.com. Good night.